Welcome everyone. It's Sunday, February, Super Bowl Sunday for those of you in the United States. Um, welcome to the weekend webinar. My name is Liam McMahon. Please look over the risk disclaimer, which should now be on your screen, and then we'll go to the charts. If you're watching the recording, please take a moment to pause the recording and carefully look over the risk disclaimer. Okay, uh, so let's begin. So just as a heads up, uh, I only have one monitor today, so uh, when I'm looking at the charts, I can't see your questions. I'll be checking back periodically, so uh, I will see your questions. So if you have them, by all means, please feel free to put any questions or requests that you may have into the chat box, and I'll be happy to cover them. Going to be moving fairly quickly today. Um, there's a lot I want to get through. We have a very busy week coming up, uh, and I want to make this a fairly quick webinar because I do have things to do later tonight. Um, so let's start. I do want to talk about uh, equities really quick. Um, specifically, all right, two things. The first thing I want to look at here, um, this is uh, a longer term chart of uh, the SPDR uh, energy ETF. All right, um, I want you to note this longer term ascending wedge that we've had uh, that we finally seem to break out of on Friday. Uh, remember, ascending wedges are bearish reversal patterns. They tend to run for a very long time, but when they break, they tend to break with a good deal of enthusiasm. <laughs> we see a lot of them sort of forming over the markets. We've seen a lot of them forming over the markets for quite some time, uh, and some of them are starting to break down. So that's a little uh, disconcerting for equity bulls and something you want to keep an eye on. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out here was the Nikkei. Um, this is Nikkei Futures. Uh, we have this head and shoulders top that we broke down out of um, you can see the retest here. We carried lower, and we actually closed below this trend line on Friday. This trend line dates back to June 6th of last year, uh, so it's a long-standing trend line that we managed to put a semi-convincing daily close in on, under. All right, so there is a little bit of concern in foreign equities as well. Remember, if the Nikkei really starts to sell off, the yen really starts to rally, uh, and U.S. equities tend to follow that lower. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. We're going to be talking about the yen pairs and how we may exactly play that out. Um, this week. Um, all right, so let's go to some Forex pairs then. Uh, remember, it is the first week of the month, uh, so we do have some very significant um, event risks going on this week. Uh, to begin, we have um, we have a uh, Reserve Bank of Australia rate decision, we have the Bank of England rate decision, the European Central Bank rate decision, New Zealand quarterly employment, uh, and then the big one on Friday, obviously, is uh, non-farm payrolls. And, of course, with non-farm payrolls comes everything else. Uh, so we have ADP numbers on Wednesday, unemployment, weekly unemployment claims on Thursday, uh, both ISM numbers for the U.S., uh, and then Canadian data also due out on Friday. Their employment uh, is due. So very busy week. Uh, lots of volatility should be expected. Um, markets have just opened. I haven't really checked to see. It doesn't look like we've, we're seeing any major gaps right now. Uh, this is Euro dollar. Uh, daily chart of Euro dollar. I'm looking to sell rallies up to about uh, 135.50. All right, we do have this long, longer standing trend line. Dates back to November, uh, sorry, September of last year. Uh, one, two, three, pretty four even. Uh, pretty solid touches on this trend line and a solid breakthrough here on Friday. Uh, so if we do see a bounce, all right, maybe off the data, off the ECB, ahead of non-farms, whatever. Um, the 135.50 level is a nice retest of the trend line and the 100-day moving average uh, combined. So that's definitely uh, one I'm watching very carefully this week. All right, so that's a, a possible sell on euro dollar at about 135.50. I want to wait for that bounce to sell around 135.50. I don't want to chase it down here because with this 200-day EMA looming at about 134.27, uh, the risk reward for that isn't particularly great because I feel like this may this level may be fairly significant support. You can see the 200 was significant a couple times recently, uh, and if it does bounce it again, uh, that kind of ruins um, your your targeting anyway. Uh, other ones to look at: pound dollar. Okay, testing its ascending wedge right now. Uh, this pair has been pretty strong lately. I really, if I'm I'm not looking to short pound dollar. Uh, until I see a really convincing move below 163.50. Up until that point, uh, I'm not looking to short it. I'll look to continue to play the pound as a strengthening currency. Uh, Euro Aussie, I want to see a breakout this week. Uh, I don't care in what direction. Um, 
Either way, that's, this one's actually better viewed on a four hour chart. So let's drop down to the four hour chart and take a look. All right, so we have this nice four hour bull flag uh, forming here, or at least descending channel. You can argue whether or not it's an actual bull flag. Major support 153.30. All right, that's the 200 period EMA, and this long term ascending trend line. Uh, so I would like to buy a breakout above this channel, all right, or I would like to sell a breakdown underneath this um, uh, trend line dating back towards November of this year, uh, of last year, sorry. Uh, so those are the levels that I'm looking at. Either way, I'll take a breakout uh, to trade Euro Aussie in uh, really in either direction. I don't have a particularly strong preference on that. Um, dollar Yen is another one I'm looking for a breakout here. See where we're at right now. I talked about the Nikkei uh, being looking weak. All right, so I think my my preference would be to play a short, uh, but we do have this very nice ascending trend line. All right, coming up from October of last year, one, two, three. And now we're on a fourth touch. Uh, so if we do manage to move below, basically 101.85. All right, that would open up a good deal of downside. But on the other hand, if this trend stays intact and we move back above this descending trend line about 102.55 or so, uh, I'd be perfectly willing to buy it uh, should it come to that. All right, so that's another one. I'm just really looking for a breakout, and I'll take it in either direction. Dollar CAD. Uh, I like Dollar CAD to the downside for the first time in quite some time. I talked about this on the weekend video. I also wrote an article about it for Daily FX. Um, so feel free to try to, to check those out. Um, we have significant RSI divergence here on the four hour chart. Uh, we're falling back here from a major uh, multi-year 50% FIB. And all right, we're now testing some trend line support. We've broken some trend line support. All right, so I am looking for um, continued downside here in this pair uh, going forward. We do need to get below uh, about 110.70 or so to see it really take off. Uh, but I think we could actually see the Canadian dollar finally start to, you know, just benefit a little bit from some sort of uh, bounce after all the selling that we've seen. Which means that we may see, all right, continued downside in some of these other crosses. Looking at KiwiCAD for possible shorts on a bounce, um, AussieCAD is actually really pretty unclear right now. I'm probably just going to continue to avoid that one. Uh, EuroCAD, all right, we kind of have a sloppy head and shoulders type pattern here. Uh, major support on EuroCAD is about 148.70. And then PoundCAD, I will never, for the next probably four years, I will never buy, or sorry, I'll never sell PoundCAD, uh, but I will hope for it to correct so I can re-enter longs, all right? And so I am looking for some sort of solid correction here. Uh, on PoundCAD for a possible opportunity to uh, get along this pair yet again. Um, let's do some of the other crosses. Euro Aussie, we talked about. Euro Kiwi. I don't exactly, I mean, you could try to make like a cup and handle argument for Euro Kiwi. Um, all right, and then we'll need some sort of flag here. Uh, it's for a breakout trade higher, uh, but really kind of just staying away from this one. It's been really sloppy lately. Uh, pound Aussie, all right, you can see that we broke one of these trend lines, retested it, and we had it a little bit lower, uh, but right now I don't see a new setup for Pound Aussie. Um, it's kind of just going sideways. You could, I mean, make a trend line here, Okay, and turn it into some sort of flag type wedge pattern, uh, which is, I mean, a possibility. That would mean a break above 189.30 or so would be a nice long. Pound Kiwi. All right, Pound Kiwi is actually interesting here as well. Uh, if we kick it out real quick to the daily chart, all right, this is a fairly significant resistance area for Pound Kiwi. All right, you can see this trend line has a bunch of tests on it, and the high that we made actually picked up. Um, that, that trend line actually very nicely and then rejected. We also do have some pretty decent RSI divergence going on here as well. All right, so that's something to keep an eye on uh, for this week. Pound Kiwi, I mean, right now it would be about uh, 200 pips stop to short it with a stop above the highs, which is pretty much what you'd have to do. 
Uh, so I would probably prefer to look for a uh, shorter term setup sometime earlier this week. And don't forget, we have a ton of data affecting this pair this week. And this pair is fairly illiquid to begin with. Uh, so maybe it's not the best time uh, to be trading it. Um, dollar Swiss. Uh, still looking maybe to play a bounce down to about 90, uh, 89.80 or so. Uh, other than that, uh, maybe it's looking to sell any rallies up towards 92 as we can trade in this channel. Um, the other yen pairs, Aussie yen, uh, looks like it's consolidating here. All right, we zoom in on Aussie yen. I tried a short on this breakdown here. It was stopped out when we broke back above. Uh, so now I'm going to just continue watching this pair for hopefully a little bit more of a clear breakdown. Um, on Aussie yen. Kiwi yen down towards about 82 all right, is a significant FIB extension level um, and a good target. We've kind of bounced from there. Uh, I don't see really anything that's going to change this overall trend that we may start to see a correction. Uh, Euro yen has also broken down all right, out of this head and shoulders. Uh, any sort of retracement flag type pattern, I'll probably be looking to short. But right now, there's no setup. Kind of, unless you're in from around here, you kind of missed it. Pound yen, kind of similar. All right, it held a 6.18% fib here after the break back above the neckline of this head and shoulders, and now we're back below. Uh, so again, you kind of missed that. I missed that one. We'll see if there's some sort of flag or retracement that I can play for a short. Uh, certainly not super interested in buying any of those pairs right now uh, because of the way the Nikkei looks and because of uh, the way that the pairs themselves look. Um, gold continues to consolidate sideways. I still think I like gold higher, but I wish it would start to rally a little bit. Um, it's starting to just move listlessly. Silver I still like on a breakout above 20, but it needs to get there first. Uh, crude uh, continues to try to rally out towards that 100 level. Watch out for major sellers around 100. Um, that's a big level that they tend to lurk around always. So if we do see a move up towards 100 on crude here early in the week, look for that move to not be sustainable um, in the early week. All right. Um, did I miss any of the major pairs? Oh, I didn't do Aussie dollar or Kiwi dollar. So Aussie dollar. Uh, gap's a little bit higher tonight, actually. It's up uh, just about a tenth of a percent. Uh, still on this wedge breakout. That wedge breakout's still holding. All right, you can see basically 87 held pretty well. Um, this 100 period EMA, that's going to be the one to watch. All right, you can see it was significant here. It was significant here. It was very significant here. All right, so that's about 88.12. So we need to get above 88.12 to really, you know, endanger the bearish trend. Uh, and then above there, this 88.88 level coincides the uh, major descending trend line with the 200 period EMA here on the four hour chart. So that is a very powerful level. Um, I don't expect that to fail on the first attempt if we do see a rally out towards there. Um, and if it does fail on the first attempt, we should see some uh, increased buying pressure come in uh, and really start to look for a move up towards about 93 or so. All right, this next level descending trend line, which if you click out on the daily chart, you can see it connects the 105 highs um, with uh, the October rally. All right, so that's the next major level. It's also the 200-day EMA up there around 93.30. All right, so there's lots to do on Aussie. Uh, Kiwi looks bad. Um, uh, the RBNZ really disappointed a lot of people on uh, Wednesday, Thursday? I don't remember what day. Um, when they not only did they hold rates, which most people expected, although there were quite a few strategists calling for a hike, um, they did not offer any guidance as to when a hike may come. I think a lot of people were expecting some pretty specific guidance about possible rate hikes coming in March, uh, and they didn't get it. And so the Kiwi kind of sold off 
on the concerns that the RBNZ is going to keep rates low for a lot longer than ever anyone thought. Uh, there is a really nice selling opportunity on Kiwi at about 81.50, about 46 pips above market right now. Uh, so definitely will be keeping my eye on that one as well. Um, nice retest of this broken sort of wedge pattern um, on Kiwi Dollar. So that is the other pair that uh, I'm keeping an eye on here early in the week. All right, questions, major pairs that I missed, minor pairs that I missed. All right, let's do e-minis then. Okay, so e-minis, we broke this accelerated trend, and now we're kind of in a descending wedge, all right, which could be a good sign for bulls. We'll have to see. Uh, for right now, though, the major level on e-minis is this 1730 level. All right, it's this major trend line. That's the one you have to watch. Uh, we do have some RSI divergence, which is worth noting. All right. Um, if we see a break above basically 1790, we could see a little bit of an acceleration um, of upside moves. Uh, but as long, I mean, even if we get a rally up towards about 1833, all right, we could still see a very solid rejection there. So uh, E-minis do have a lot of work to do. They really need to get above 1830. Uh, once we're above 1830, I would expect new highs very, very shortly. Um, but so watch that for the breakout and then watch this 1730 level. Below there is when uh, bears really start uh, to s try to seize control back uh, after this really aggressive bull market that we've been in for quite some time. Um, Cat Swiss actually uh, is a, I don't, I have a general rule where I don't ever short Swiss pairs. Um, so I'm going to stick to that rule. But if you do, Cat Swiss is at a uh, nice resistance right here. All right, you can see it's retesting the bottom of that broken channel. Um, the does kind of look like a possible inverse head and shoulders, albeit with a very drawn out left shoulder and a very abbreviated right shoulder. Um, but if that is the case, we could see Cat Swiss continue uh, higher, and like I said, I am for the first time in quite some time tentatively bullish the Canadian dollar, so I won't be rushing into any Canadian dollar shorts. But that is a potential setup that's available right now. Uh, Aussie Swiss looks like a uh, bear flag here, as uh, Euro Aussie looks like a bull flag, so not really looking to uh, trade that one. Some people like the peso, that looks like a pretty solid breakout here on the peso. The Turkish Lira, all right, is also kind of chopping around in its 50% range after the intervention. All right, we saw the intervention took it all the way back down towards about 216, and we've bounced pretty high from there at 225 right now. Uh, so keep your eye on these emerging markets. Um, South African Rand is another one, all right. It's managed to gain a little bit on Friday. Uh, these, if you start to see these currencies sell off, so USDZAR up, USDTRY up, USDMXN up. Uh, be a little bit wary about uh, equity strength and risk in general. Those are what has been causing all the market jitters lately, and they certainly have the potential to continue to do so in this upcoming week. Um, all right, questions, concerns. So right now, Aussie dollar, I'm probably not going to play it. 
at all. Um, I think the other Aussie pair, like I've looked to play Euro Aussie, Aussie Yen before I try to play Aussie Dollar. Uh, a couple reasons for that. One, NFPs uh, make dollar pairs particularly jumpy uh, this week uh, and all the data that leads up to that. And two, the setup right now on Aussie just isn't great. Uh, it's, I mean, it's kind of this range here. If you wanted to, all right, so if you're an Aussie bear, so if you think that this trend is going to continue, uh, you want to try to short it around 88, all right, with targets below 86. If you're an Aussie bull, you want to try to buy it around 87, and then you can try to be as aggressive as you want. That 88, 88 level is huge. If we break that 88, 88 level, for whatever reason, before like Wednesday this week, which I think is unlikely, but if we do, then I will be getting long Aussie dollar. Uh, but up until that point, I probably won't be looking to trade it much at all. I'll be focusing on Euro Aussie because um, I think that is a much nicer Aussie setup in either direction, either a breakdown below a significant trend line or a breakout out of some sort of bull flag. Uh, much preferable to me than the confusion that is Aussie dollar right now. USD NOK, uh, I haven't looked at it since... Thursday, but I was super bullish then. Yeah, it remains super bullish. Um, I don't pay enough attention to the Nordics, um, unfortunately. Uh, so this was the long, this four-hour close above here. That was 621.80. We're at, we touched the high of 630, so much, very significant rally. Um, this one looks very good for much higher. All right, this one, if we go to a 10-year chart, okay, uh, this looks good to continue up towards like these 6725 highs, if not beyond. Um, the major opportunity, if we do get an opportunity to buy, uh, it'll be at about 6.2 again on some sort of retracement here. Uh, I don't know if we'll get it, but if we do, it would be a godsend uh, in terms of risk reward because uh, you could keep your stop really at about 617 and you could have way, way aggressive targets up in the 6.7 range. Uh, so right now, uh, USD NOK looks really, really good. Uh, your stop would have to be huge to buy it right now, um, but it does look really nice. Uh, the Swedish Krona, Krona also looks good, okay, breakout there. Um, so I do like the Nordic pairs uh, to uh, continue, well, the Nordic currencies to continue to weaken against the dollar uh, here this week. And of course, with the data, we could see some volatility, but I suspect that that trend will sustain itself um, through, through the data unless we see something just completely disastrous out of the United States, which we most likely won't. Other questions? No, I have no position in dollar Swiss. I wish I was, but no, I don't have a position. All right, any other questions? All right, sounds good. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Um, as always, you can find me on Twitter there. You can find us on Twitter there. All right, so thanks for coming. I have a great trading week. Uh, if you're going to watch the Super Bowl, enjoy. Um, remember, lots and lots of event risks this week, so be careful, uh, and I will be talking to you soon.